Well, here we are, everybody. Week five. We're in October. You know, we're heading into October. You know, most of these games this week in college football will be played on the first day of October. Isn't that great? Isn't that fun? Isn't that wonderful? And that means we're already a third of the way through the season. Boy, how time flies. And, you know, it's a little bit later than usual. Yeah, them hurricanes are coming. I'm talking about real hurricanes this time, not the Miami hurricanes. Hurricane Ian is um, you know, wrecking the... He's going to probably wreck the East Coast, especially Florida, South Carolina, Georgia, you know, places like those, you know, for the next few days, so... Of course, you know, my heart goes out to all those who are affected. Hopefully, everybody is safe out there. Now, there are some games that are being affected. We don't know what Wake Forest, Florida State is, what the state of that game is going to be at this time. But South Carolina State, South Carolina, that got moved up to Thursday. UCF, SMU, and Eastern Washington, Florida, both of those games are on Sunday now. Uh, USF. East Carolina, it's at FAU Stadium, so you know that that game got moved to FAU Stadium, and a bunch of other games. I know there was a game that got canceled. I think it was like Stetson, San Diego, and I know I haven't talked about the FCS on here in quite some time, um, in the past few weeks. But you know, there's there's really not much for me to talk about right now. Uh, now there is an FCS game that's on ES that's on the actual ESPN networks this week, but it's not really a game that I wanna, you know, watch. But you know, it is what it is. Um, so we got a couple of intriguing games to start the midweek Thursday night. You got a bad Utah State Aggies team going up against BYU. Um, the Cougs are looking to keep keep the momentum up. The Aggies, we know, are not that great because they got blown out by a uh, by Weber State, and they just haven't looked competitive at all. Like, like, are we sure this was the Mountain West champion last year? Well, that was last year. It's a new year now, and Utah State just isn't that good. But the more interesting game, if you want to watch a midweek game, is on Friday night, Pac-12 after dark. Highlighted game for me, one of the, one of the six. Washington going on the road to take on UCLA. Unbeaten UCLA. Yeah, the Bruins have had it a little easy, but Dorian Thompson, Robinson, and company, they're still kicking, they're still fighting, you know, to get some respect. And again, the Bruins aren't right like several other teams that are undefeated aren't right, like Kansas, you know. But, you know, this, this Washington team has more of a pulse. This is the type of energy, man. This is the type of energy I haven't seen from the Huskies in quite some time. I mean, Phoenix Jr. might throw for like 300 against this UCLA team again. This is the same UCLA team that almost lost to South Alabama. Keep in mind that fact. We're gonna learn a lot more about UCLA because I don't, I don't, I feel like, I feel like the easier games they had, you know, again, aside from the South Alabama game. Which we learned a lot about them there. I feel like conference play is really going to let us know what's going to happen because Colorado was terrible, and you know that that that's not an indicator of anything. But Washington, we know, is a good team, and they can they can do something. So number fifteen ranked Washington will play on Friday night, and it'll be a good one. Everything's a little bit more compact now. The noon slate. Kentucky Ole Miss is the highlight of this noon slate. There are a few other games here at noon and a little bit afternoon, but you know, that's Oregon State, Utah. That's, you know, kind of in a weird spot. But Kentucky Ole Miss is going to be the big one in this window. You got the Rebels running game being a force. You know, you got Ulysses Bentley, the fourth, Zach Evans, Quinshawn Jenkins. And Jackson Dart out here all doing work. You wonder, this is a good Cats defense. 
a very good Wildcats defense that can stop the run very well. But will Levis and company have to establish the run themselves? Can they do that against Ole Miss? We'll find out. You know, we know Will Levis can throw the ball, but can the Cats run the ball? Can they can they stop can they stop this, you know, vaunted Ole Miss attack on the ground? We'll see. Michigan, Iowa. Uh, again, Michigan is on Big Fox again for another noon game. But in fact, they got like three or four straight noon games that are gonna be on Fox. And we all know Kinnick Stadium is a scary place for Michigan to play at, but JJ McCarthy and company, you know, they might put that rumor to bed. They might put that scary monster to bed. The the Iowa Hawkeyes are just not good on offense. I mean, my goodness. Their defense is very good, though. You know, we're talking best defense in the country. <laughs> Again, one of the best, at least. But this offense for Iowa, it's it's very, very disappointing to watch. Yeah, they put up 31 against Rutgers last week, but that's Rutgers. Come on. We're talking about teams that could actually compete in the Big Ten here. So we'll see if Iowa can actually put up anything, any sort of, you know, some life, show some signs of life against Michigan. We'll find that out. Um, Oklahoma TCU, another big one. Max Duggan, he's still there. He had a big game last year against Oklahoma, but that was last year. You know, the Sooners team is quite angry after, you know, a defensive performance that was not very good last week against K-State. Will TCU be able to do something against Oklahoma? Will, will they be able to, you know, be able to throw it all over Oklahoma like they did last year? Or will the run be a factor in things? You know, Max Duggan can also run the ball. We, we've we seen this man, we've seen, we've seen this TCU team, you know, again, this is an unbeaten TCU team that, you know, they, they've been able to play. They've been able to play some good football so far. Um, Oklahoma, they lose this game, you know, it's gonna be real tough for them to make it back to the big to the to the Big Twelve Championship. It's gonna be real tough. Again, a lot of people have Oklahoma losing three games this year anyway, but it would be really, really disappointing for the Sooners if they lose this game before Red River. You know. You, you can't lose this you can't, you can't lose this game against TCU. It's hilarious though that you know, we got an ESPN Plus game, you know, for this next matchup, Texas Tech, Kansas State. It was picked for ESPN Plus, you know, the week before, you know, a week or two before, you know, everything got got set for this week. And it's kind of funny. But we all know Adrian Martinez, Deuce Vaughn, and this Cats offense, you know, they can keep it up. Yeah, they can keep up the momentum because we know Texas Tech, their defense ain't that good, you know. Yeah, they beat Texas last week, but I mean, that was, again, that was really more of a indictment on Texas than anything. Because, we, cause again, Texas Tech's defense is not very good. Their offense can, they, their offense kept Texas off the field, but, you know, by, you know, with the up-tempo nonsense and everything like that, but this defense for Tech is not good at all. Not very good. Purdue taking on an unbeaten Minnesota team with P.J. Fleck and the Golden Gophers cooking on offense. They're cooking. Again, Purdue, we know Purdue can upset top 25 teams, but then again, this is a Purdue team that just has not looked very good at all this year. You know, like they've struggled throughout the season so far, and, you know, Minnesota's offense is just looking to keep going like they're putting up 543 yards a game that that that's unheard of for Minnesota that's that's that's, a, that's kind of an unheard scenario here and then you have Oregon State Utah Cam rising you know and company the Utes you know that defense that offense you know I mean we're talking he can throw to Dalton Kincaid he can't throw the Brant Quithy uh, I hope I'm saying that name right because I'm usually can get names wrong. But you know, Utah's still looking pretty good on offense and on defense. What the problem here is is that the Beavers' defense is pretty tough. 
again, they played UC, USC pretty damn good last week. Like we're, It was almost a perfect game until the very end. And the question here, the real question here is, can Chance Nolan actually do anything against the Utes, though? That, that's the big question because he threw way too many interceptions last week against USC. That can't happen again. You know, the Beavers should have had this game won last week against USC, but they didn't count on the Trojan defense being, you know, that that good at picking the ball off because the, the Trojan's defense can do that. They, they can do that. They can't stop anything, but they can pick the ball off. All right, the afternoon slate is loaded. Loaded, loaded slate. Alabama, number two, taking on number 20, Arkansas, K.J. Jefferson, and that Hogs rushing attack, you know, are going up against a, a, a really good, you know, defense in Alabama. We all know what this Bama defense can do. And then there's also Bryce Young on offense. There's a couple questions that do need to be answered here. Is, you know, despite the, te despite the Texas game being an anomaly, you know, it doesn't feel like an anomaly. Yeah, you played Vanderbilt last week. That's good and fine and all. That was Vanderbilt. The wide receiver game, the O-line for Bama, Crimson Tide. What is your answer to that? What in the world is going on with that? Is, is that fixed? For the Hogs, a secondary. Not that good. Not that great. Um... It, it, something's something's got to give there. I think there's a fly up in here, you know. Um, like the secondary needs a pulse. Can they do something? Can the Hawks secondary do something to stop Bryce Young? We'll see. And then you got Oklahoma State, Baylor, Spencer Sanders, and those Cowboys taking on Dave Aranda's Bears, and this. Is an intriguing matchup with the two teams that met in the Big 12 Championship last season. You know, a Cowboys offense that can score, defense kind of iffy, a Bears defense that's very good. They can stop the run. The offense is kind of shaky though, so it's gonna be it's gonna be one of those types of matchups. A really good one, a really fun one. If you don't if you don't want to watch that, if you don't want to watch Alabama Arkansas, you think that might be a blowout or something like that, watch this one. One of my definitely, you know, a highlighted game for sure. Another ranked matchup as well. And the th and this is the third ranked matchup of the weekend. Alongside Alabama, Arkansas, and Ole Miss, Kentucky. And then you got another ranked matchup right after that. If you don't want to watch those two games, you want to watch Wake Forest, Florida State. Because Sam Hartman and the Demon Deacons. Oh boy, they gotta be angry at themselves at the last week against Clemson. They gotta be real angry after letting Clemson escape with a win. And the Knowles, they last time we talked about the Knowles, I think was what? You know week one? Week two? You know, this Knowles team is a little bit banged up. I'm not sure about the status of Jordan Travis right now. I know he got injured. Um, I'm not sure what's going on. You know, again, we don't even know what the status of this game is going to be. We need to see if Florida State's for real or not. Again, number 23 ranked Florida State. It's number 22 ranked Wake Forest again. Wake Forest didn't really get penalized for that loss, by the way. Kind of like how Texas, you know, got moved up into a poll after a loss, which is really funny and also really sad. I don't want to talk about Texas right now. Um... So this this one, you know, if you don't want to watch Alabama Arkansas, you think that might be a blowout. Or you don't want to watch Oklahoma State Baylor. I'd suggest you watch this one. It's gonna be a good one. Between Wake Forest to Florida State. Now we'll see again, we'll see if this game even gets played at the time it's supposed to be, but I hope it is. Because that would be that would be crazy if it's not. Then you got Northwestern Penn State, a, a Northwestern team that just can't stop the run, turns the ball over. And we know Penn, we know Penn State's run game can go. We know that, that run game is legit. And then you got Rutgers, Ohio State. Again, this Buckeyes offense unstoppable. I I, I don't even know if the Scarlet Knights can actually do anything here against Ohio State. 
So that those two games, I think those are pretty cut and dry who's going to win those games unless something stupid happens. But I mean, Northwestern and Rutgers, they they just they just aren't competitive teams. We know this. Texas A&M, Mississippi State. Anaya Smith, he's done for the year with an injury, unfortunately. Yeah, you got Devon Acne, he's still raring to go, but this is this is a Mississippi State team that is definitely a team that can go. You know, we there's Mike Leach is still there. That air raid attack is still there. And Jimbo Fisher and company have to find an answer right now. Alabama is waiting for you. And you know, the game against Alabama next week could determine A and M season. You know, again, I don't think A and M is gonna do anything anyway, but they have to win this game as well against Mississippi State. You can't overlook Mississippi State because they are upset minded and upset minded force. There's not much in the evening. Uh, you know, you got Georgia, Missouri, you know, the Bulldogs defense just look the rebound after what happened against Kent State, because, I mean, do you expect Missouri, the same Missouri that messed up completely against Auburn, to do anything against Georgia? Probably not. And then you got Jeff Collins. Unfortunately for Georgia Tech, they have to fire this man. They have to fire the AD, too. And I don't expect anything from GT against it. With Keaton Slovis back at it, he might be having a big day, so don't watch those games. Don't watch those. Watch NC State Clemson, the top 10 matchup, the number 10 ranked NC State Wolfpack with a scary defensive bunch. Can they stop DJ Uilagalele? Will Devin Leary have a big day against a Tigers defense that hasn't looked amazing all season? We'll find out. Definitely biggest game of the weekend in my eyes. Somebody is going to lose this game, and somebody's going to be displeased at the end of the day. There's some Pac-12 after dark later. You know, if you if you're done watching NC State clubs, this is Pac-12 after dark. After that, you know, Arizona State taking on USC and Stanford, Oregon. Stanford's defense we know is not that great. The offense is not good either. Bo Nix been inconsistent, but. He's been playing much, much better as of late. You know, still inconsistent, but he's been playing, you know, like Bo Nix does. And then you got USC against Arizona State. You know, the Sun Devils, they just can't do anything against the run. They can't score. They're just a broken team right now. And that 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 spells disaster right there that's just disastrous results you know that just cannot be replicated and you already know USC is quite angry after you know that game against Oregon State in which they barely escaped with a win so we'll see if the Trojans can get back on track I think they will so with all that being said that'll do it Week 5, a little bit finally a more compact schedule, you know, that makes it easier for me to do my notes and everything, but it's it's going to be a fun weekend of college football, you know, Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday, going to be all juicy, cannot wait for all the good stuff, so I'll see you all, prob yeah, it'll probably be like 1 or 2 a.m. when I see you to talk week 5, and that's it. See you tomorrow to talk to the NFL. Take care, everybody.